tell you that last night we experienced angelic visitations. I want you to put your hands together for these anointed men and women of God. Dr. Bynum! Dr. Bynum, we want to walk down. Woo. I, I, I hear the sound in the air. I, I, I sense the building getting ready to take place. Woo. This, this, this is why those spirits was fighting us at the beginning of tonight. This is why, this, this, this is why he, he fought us the way he fought us because he doesn't want to happen to you what is going to happen to you. And I want you to say to your neighbor, he can't stop this. Come on, lift your hands, open up your mouth and just begin to worship for a moment. Huh? Just for a moment, just for a moment. Just for a moment. Just for a moment. Oh Lord, oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh God. Oh, we have a reason to worship you. Oh God. We came with a motive tonight. Oh God. this minute for a minute come on let's take this minute for a minute let's take this minute let's take this minute let's take this minute somebody lift your hands up 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 and worship him come on he's a worthy of worship he's a worthy of worship he's a worthy of the worship He's worthy of the worship. He's worthy of the worship. Come on, give it to him. Anybody else said he'll want it? I want it. I want it like Moses said. If you don't go with me, God, I won't go. If you don't go with me, I won't go. If you don't go with me, I won't go. God, I need to go.
Anybody feel like saying that? Holy Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody come on, lift your hands up and sing that with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody sing it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody around the world sing. Because it's water. Come on, sing holy. Hallelujah. Everybody across the world sing. Everybody sing. Oh, he's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Everybody around the world sing. Hallelujah. 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 You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the glory. Yes, you are. You're worthy of the honor. That's why we sing hallelujah. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of honor. You're worthy of the honor. That's why we sing hallelujah. One more time. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of honor. You're worthy of the honor. That's why we sing hallelujah. Come on, everybody, one more time. Worthy of the glory. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy of the honor. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy of the praise. That's why we sing hallelujah. One more time, everybody. You're worthy of the glory. Come on, Lord. You're worthy of the glory. Eight five five seven three zero word. Eight five five seven three zero word. Now listen. All tonight through social media, people have been emailing and sending you, in word that they need breakthrough. From the minute the show started off, and they're gonna bring me some names in in a few moments, where people are battling a mental and emotional breakdown. From last night's show, people were getting healed and set free. Last night's show, a person who had experienced multiple miscarriages, wow. couldn't sleep, hearing voices of babies in their dream, are healed tonight. Jesus. The glory, Shadabasakobo, the glory of the Lord is more than us dancing, shouting, running around the place. It's more than that. The first time in scripture worship is mentioned, the very first time in scripture worship is mentioned, there is no music. There's no organ, there's no drums, there's, there, 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 there's, there's, there's nothing. The first time worship is mentioned in scripture, Abraham says, you wait here with the donkeys, me and the lad is going to sacrifice. Yes. The first time worship, we're going to worship. Worship is sacrifice. When you come out of worship, and you come out of worship with the same stuff that you went in to worship with, you just went and had a service. You never worshiped God. That's right. Worship will kill some things. Yes. It's in the worship where you offer these things up and God slays the enemy in your life. 855-730-WORD. Tonight is a night of worship. We're going to sacrifice some stuff on the altars of praise and the glory of the Lord. Yes. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed in this place tonight. That's right. 855 730 word. The importance of you sowing this seed is that you're sowing the seed and you're placing a demand on the seed that is sown. Yes. I sense in my spirit healing and breakthrough 
for so many of you who've been tormented in the mind. Yes. I know I have been. I've battled for many, many years with a chronic, chronic spirit of rejection. My God. A chronic spirit of rejection. And the Lord has set me free from the spirit of rejection. My God. And I want you to know that God wants to set you free tonight from whatever your bondage is. So as you continue to call and as you continue to send your emails in through social media, watch tonight because the glory of the Lord is in this place. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Bishop, I thought you were going to uh, go back into the photographs. Yes. Um, and I didn't know whether or not they had it queued up, but if you were not in this building, we were talking about how when we lend space to the Lord and when we are removed from interfering with what it is God is trying to say, he will reveal himself in ways that is not average. It's not normal. And last night we were talking about um, Bishop J.D. Ellis, uh, College of the Bishops, and how when all of the leadership got in that room, and you don't want to change the dial because my bishop is coming up. When I tell you he is a man that carries a sincere word from the Lord. And I say that because that is one of the reasons why I believe that I am comfortable in following Bishop Neil Ellis because he is sincere about the things of God. And he was preaching that night. And he said to us, there's going to be an unusual anointing that is going to show up in this building. And it showed up. And not only did it show up, but Bishop's son-in-law and his daughter is here with us tonight. Bishop J.D. Ellis, his son-in-law and daughter is with us tonight. And he took a picture of what was happening in that building. And the picture that is on the screen is a touchdown of the glory of God. And see, somebody didn't respond right there because I said it's a touchdown of the glory of God. And I think some of the men probably could relate to that when your favorite football player make a touchdown. That's a reason to cheer. And God said, that's what I'm going to do tonight. It's going to be a touchdown from the glory of God. And that's why somebody in here need to start praising God because it's going to be a touchdown. The Lord is not finished yet. He's just getting started. Is there anybody that want a touchdown? Come on and open up your mouth and give him a shout. I think I see one young man right there. And we often wonder why. Many of us don't see the revelation of that touchdown, Bishop, because we're not willing to dismantle ourselves. Wow. We're going to go with, um, you and I were talking about Exodus, the 33rd chapter, yes. and the 14th verse. And Bishop, if you would read that for us, because I'm, I'm, people need to understand uh, that the glory of God, the Bible said he has already filled the earth. And so people are saying, uh, Pastor Lillian, they're saying, uh, Bishop D, that, well, if the glory of God has already filled the earth, then why is it that there is so much chaos all over the world? Why is it that it appears that the devil seems to be winning? Why is it that it appears that everybody that's on the side of the enemy is, it, it, it seems to be walking uh, in a greater victory than the believers? But I choose to call all of that an illusion from the enemy, uh, Exodus 33 and 14. Uh, Pastor, if you're going to read that for us, I want the people to hear this. What does it say? And he said, mm -hmm. my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Now, he's t here God is talking to Moses, and, and, and Moses is getting ready. Watch this. Moses is getting ready to move into something that he has never experienced before. And so I'm talking to somebody. That's the presence and the spirit that I feel in the building tonight. I, I feel that prophetic word that somebody that is watching. Last night was deliverance. Tonight is movement. Uh -huh. Somebody is getting ready to move into something that you've never moved in before. And the Lord said that, watch this. He hasn't just opened up the doors. I just heard him say, I have taken the door off of the hinges. And there is no door. He said, if you come through me, oh, no I have seen and no ear have heard. He said, tonight is a night of movement. And so when Moses got ready to step into something that he had never experienced before, 
When he watched this, and not only was he going to step into it, but he was going to take a people with him. And God said tonight, if you're watching by television, you're watching by internet, he said, as you worship him and the glory of God fill this place, he said, I'm going to shift you, but you're going to take some people with you. Some people that the enemy has grips on. Some people that the devil told you he would never turn loose. Some people that are in the hospital. Some people go. that the doctors have gave up on. I give a Lord said, I'm going to shift you tonight. And when I move you, you've taken some people with you. And for those of you who have been struggling financially, I hear the Lord say, tonight, uh, as the glory of God fill the room, uh, I'm going to make the devil give you uh, substance. Uh, because when you step into this move, uh, you will not go out empty-handed. Uh, somebody better give God praise right now. I just need a believer in here tonight. I just need somebody to believe God. I need somebody to look at their hands because they're filled. I don't think you just heard what I said. I need somebody to look at their hands because they're filled. Because the Lord said, I'm moving. Somebody say, the Lord just said, I'm moving. And I'm not going empty handed. Somebody better give him a shot right there. Glory to God. But see, there are there are some criteria to the supernatural move. There are some 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 special ingredients to the spirit to the supernatural move. There were some components that you must compare that you must possess that you cannot make one step without. What did Moses say? And he said unto him. Mm -hmm. If thy presence go not with me. If your presence don't go with me. Carry us, us not up hence. For the, wherein. Mm -hmm. No, he said, if your presence don't go with me, then don't carry me nowhere. Because see, what the problem is, a bishop, bishop, people are interested in going somewhere. And that was a reason why. God, I don't feel like doing this tonight, Bishop. I, I'm telling you, I feel like running all over this studio. Because when you start talking about the glory of God, sick bodies are healed. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You don't know what I feel going through my own body right now. Supernatural stuff happened when you get in the prayer. The Bible said that there was a reason why that there came a season when the glory of God uh, had backed up from the people of God and the people wanted to go get the glory they wanted to go and get the ark of the covenant that represented the glory and, 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 and Pastor Lillian they tried but the problem was this they were missing this ingredient but they added another one and the ingredients that they added was that they were going to try to do it their way and the Holy Ghost said to me that's the reason why we haven't seen the glory because pastors are trying to fabricate the glory you think just because we put on pretty robes that's the glory you think because you hire the best praise and worship leaders that that's the glory he said but the problem is we can't bring it up our way we got to go back and park that thing get on our faces up God for a breakthrough. Ask God to break us from the inside like David did. He said, no, we can't just go get it. Because it's not something, watch this, that can be brought up by temple preachers. Right, right. The deliverance that's taken place, it cannot happen, Bishop Bloomer, with temple preachers. Now let me help you. Jesus have mercy. The rabbis used to stand in the temple. And they would read the word. And the glory would show up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But now the Bible said. That the whole earth is filled with the glory of God. Because where is the glory? Because what we got to understand in this hour. Is that we got to take a responsibility. To get the glory in the house. And how do we do that? Because he said, now the word is in you. And he said, I 
need you to release the glory. I'm not giving you the glory is in the earth realm, but it's got to be released. And the only way it's going to be released, somebody got to open up their mouth. Good Lord, have mercy. Somebody got to give God a praise. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. Y'all ain't hear me. He said in the scripture, 855730 a word. He said in the scripture, my glory, I'm revealing. And he said, I've already revealed my glory. But watch this. He said, but I wrapped myself up in Jesus. And when Jesus came, he said, and now I'm going to reveal my glory again. And when I read that, I heard the spirit say, encore. And I heard God said, what I did back then, it's about to be an encore. No, you don't hear me. 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 But what am I trying to say? In order for you to release the glory, oh, shanda, Jesus wasn't able to release the glory until he was willing to be crushed. Oh, shanda, baha. And the minute he said, not my will, but thine will be done. Now, I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. The glory starts seeping out. The minute they start walking him from judgment hall the judgment hall the glory starts seeping out the minute they spit on him the minute they nailed him to the cross the glory starts seeping out in everybody in this place you watching my television whatever you going through that ain't trouble that's the glory trying to seep out you better start praising him because the bible said that I reckon up that this present suffering up is not worthy up to be compared up with the glory up that shall be revealed up in all of us up somebody give God a shout right there God I feel something breaking I feel somebody changing their mind. I feel somebody in the building. Uh, they about to call their trouble. Uh, the glory of God. Uh, I double dare you right now. Uh, to start blessing God. Uh, for whatever you going through. Uh, start calling your trouble. Uh, the glory of God. Uh, open your mouth now. Uh, and say I think I see the glory. Uh, trying to seep out in my life. Uh, somebody give God get the glory out of it. God get the glory out of it. Get the glory out of all of it. Get the glory out of all of it. Get the glory out of all of it. What the devil meant for harm. God get the glory out. What the devil meant for evil. God get the glory out. Somebody give him a shout. Some of y'all, wait a minute. Some of y'all, right here in the studio, y'all giving God a studio praise. Y'all trying to give God a studio praise. I'm looking for somebody that can let your mind go back to everything the devil tried to do. Yes, you come outside you in the last year. Everything the devil tried to do. And I double dare you right now to start giving God praise. Because I give a Lord saying, I'm going to turn your trouble out into glory. Somebody give God a praise in here. Give him a shout. Seven three. Hold that up,
See, let me tell you what you don't understand. He said, blow my, I just, Bishop, Bishop, this is, this is my brother, so I can call him Bloomer. He said, I just downloaded another revelation. He said, I said in my scripture that I would not share my glory with another. Wait a minute. And, and sometimes we think, sometimes we think that means that somebody is trying to steal the praise. But he just said to me, I won't share my glory with another. He said, what you mean? The glory that the devil is trying to get out of your situation, I'm not sharing. No, you better, no, y'all better come on here and open your mouth up. He said, whatever the devil is doing right now, I won't share it. And why? I got to solve it. The reason why I got to overturn it. The reason why there was an overturning in the spirit that's happening right now. The reason why there was a divine reversal that is taking place right now. Because God said, you belong to me. I branded you. And I will not share the glory with the enemy. So you better start shouting right there in your house. You better start shouting right there at your job. Who am I talking to? I will not share. Both of us can't get the glory. Both of us can't get the glory. God can't get the glory. If the devil is trying to, if the devil is trying to get the glory. And I kept hearing the Lord all day. He said, when you look out in the end times, and you see churches trying to have church as usual. He said, ask yourself a question. I've been hearing this turning over in my spirit all day. Is there a thief in the house? Is there somebody in the house that's trying to steal his glory? Is there, is there somebody in the house that's more impressed with their preaching than they are my glory? I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. God, I feel your anointing so heavy. Good Lord, help me, help me, Bishop. Is there, is there, is there somebody that's trying to, that's trying to listen, listen? Are you willing tonight that when God get through using you to preach, will you turn around and give the glory to God? When somebody said you really bless me, would you say to God be the glory instead of saying thank you? No, I didn't hear nobody talk to me. When the Lord use you in the ministry of song, is it for Him? Or are you trying to make a platform for? yourself. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. That's why there's a whole lot of worship going on. But it's not a whole lot of glory. Because it's for the purpose of the person. And not to bring the glory of God down. Who am I talking to? But I hear a sound in the spirit. There's another generation that God is raising up. There's a remnant of people that God is raising up. And these people are crying out in the midnight hour. Lord, show me your glory. Lord, show me your glory. Somebody give God a shout right now. Hey, my mama, my mama, shit, my mama, my sicket, my mama had it, they may hear me. Hiya, my mammy, I see him, hiya. They coming, they coming. I can hear a sound. I hear the, I hear the footsteps of another generation. And then my name I hear. I hear the Lord saying, all of y'all that are out there, that the people in the church that made you feel like you're crazy because of the way you worship, because of the way you praise. God said, I'm changing the stage. It's time for the changing of the gods. And I'm calling for the glory carriers. Yes, you come to Messiah. Not the person up that want a new position. Not the person up that want to be elevated uh, but I'm calling on the people uh, that are travailing in prayer uh, that say God uh, make me a glory carrier somebody open up your mouth and give him worship Will not share my glory with another. Wow! 
I will not share my glory with another. You are the glory of God made in his image and he will not share you with any demonic force. Hallelujah! Shakata na 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 masa kotobo shakataba ikotobo shakataba The glory is being released in this house. Oh my God. That's deep. I will not share my glory. I will. Woo! I will. I won't share it. I won't share it. I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. I won't share you. I done been too good to you. I done brought you too far. I won't share you. It was me, the Lord said, that brought you out. It is me, the Lord said, that have healed your body. It is me, the Lord said, that have made a way out of no way. And I won't share you. share you I won't share I won't share you he said that the reason why the enemy has heightened his attacks because he knows that my original intent is about to be revealed in your life and now here he comes now he want to share it y'all don't hear me Bishop did you hear that right when God get ready to step you over and where God is getting ready to take you up here come the attacks of the devil up because now the devil want to share it up but God said it's too late up I won't share it up and that's why he turned around up and said to the enemy up Satan the Lord rebuke you up I'm not hearing y'all talk that Satan the Lord rebuke you who am I preaching to tonight Lord I hear the Lord saying for the duration of this program your job 855-730 word ain't nobody trying to sell you a pressure we're trying to put you under the glory we're trying to put you under your own glory tent uh -huh. ain't nobody trying to make you get some some anointing oil because you can go to the store tonight Walmart is open 24 hours. You can go get you some oil and grease yourself down. That's not the point. The point is this. That when the Lord speaks something. The reason why the devil want to give you a different direction. Because he want to take you off course. Because the glory is in what God says. Not what we feel. Not what we think. You need to pick up the phone. Why? Because the Lord said. That this in this season. In this time. My job. Is to compel you to come under your own tent. My job. Is to compel you uh, to come and sit under the glory tent with God. Uh, your job for the rest of this program uh, is to give him glory. Uh, and his job uh, is to rebuke the devil. Uh, now I want somebody to start praising him right now. Did you just hear what I said? Did you just hear what I said? Uh, your job is to give him glory. Uh, his job is to rebuke the devil. 855-730 oh word. My God, 855. Oh Tell them what they job is. Oh, word. My God, my God. Pick up the phone. Operators are standing by. Let me, let me. Quentin, are you there? When God gave me this, in case you just tuned in, and I was about to give up. I was about to give up I was about to give up with the prayer shops 
I said, I'm not going to do it no more because people are saying she tried to say a prayer shout. And there she is again. And they playing her again. And they playing her again. And I got, I got sensitive about it. And I said, you know what? Because that's what it's not about for me. The Lord called me to do this many years ago. And I started out before I knew anything about the prayer shawl. The Lord had gave me the white sheet. Some of y'all probably remember that. When I used to travel and carry a white sheet. I didn't know about the prayer shawl. But all I knew is when I would take that sheet, Bishop, and put it over my head. And I would start praying. The Lord would reveal supernatural things to me. And everything that the Lord spoke to me and told me to do, I did it. And it succeeded because the presence went with me. I just said something for somebody. Because there's a pastors and bishops that are watching. And you're taking on great assignments of the Lord. But the Lord just told me to tell somebody that's watching, I'm with you. And I'm going with you. And I just need you to step out on what I said. I hear the Lord saying, stop counting what's in your pocket. And count on what's in your spirit. And the glory of God will open up a passageway and God will open up a hoarder and he will download to you everything that you need I said move I don't know who that was for I don't know who that was for I don't know who that was for I was about to give up and when Bishop invited me to come and do the partners conference I walked in that place and when I got there the spirit of the Lord said to me, don't leave this building. I was in greater grace. And I spent the night in that building with one assistant by myself. And I got up in the middle of the night. And God said, I want you to go out in the sanctuary by yourself. And I did. He said, I want you to understand something. That what I've called you to do is not about the word network. What I've called you to do is not about you selling the prayer shawl. This is a divine assignment. This garment is my clothing. And for you to deny people the opportunity to come and wrap themselves up in my clothes is for you to invite them to stay naked and open to the attacks of the enemy. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. My God, Pastor Lillian, you said something the other day that I want you to share about the colors and the woman with the issue of blood. And when she reached out, I didn't forget that because that thing just, I, I just got a charge in my spirit. And I said, I wasn't going to do it. And that's that middle of the night. I made a phone call and said to the people, bring the prayer shawls down to the church. And I began to weep and repent before God. And I got the prayer shawls. Five o'clock in the morning, I was spreading them out on the steps. And the Lord said to me, when my glory hit the house, I want you to start throwing the anointing oil. No, we ain't trying to sell you no oil. We're trying to give you an opportunity to get something out of an atmosphere where the presence of the Lord is here. The oil is in this building. The prayer shawls are in this building. And if you're watching my television and you can feel the anointing of God penetrating your television screen and your laptop screen, then what do you think is happening to the oil and the fabric that is in this building? Everything in here is being anointed. The ushers are being anointed. The cameras are being anointed. Every chair is being anointed. Every purpose is being anointed. And he said to me, pour the oil and I started throwing the oil it's up there on the screen and God took me and threw me on top of the prayer shawls and when I fell across those prayer shawls uh, Bishop Bloomer he said I'm marrying you to this I don't think y'all heard what I said good Lord he said I'm marrying you to this he said this will no longer be an idea for you but this will be your destiny you will offer prayer shawls to the day you close your eyes to the day I call you home to be with me you will give people an opportunity to come under the pressure it will be your call and your purpose and though I will give you many assignments I will never stop this one 
Though I will take you to many dimensions and many places. This will be your call. Wow. To the day I call you home. 855730 word. And when I left that place, rushing to get to the rushing to get to the airport. I left out of the church, out of that presence, and jumped in the car and was headed to the airport and about to miss the flight. The driver going 85 and 90 miles per hour. And God said, take out your camera because I'm going to reveal to you my glory. <laughs> and I took out my camera. And you could put the pictures up, Quentin. And I started snapping. And the first thing he said to me is, I am the Lion of Judah. Oh my God, Jesus. And as I kept snapping, there were about 68 pictures. And I'm just showing you a transition of the few. And as I snapped and I snapped, the face of the lion began to transform itself. And I'm gonna tell you that by the time God got finished, I fell back in the chair of the back of the car. And I said, God, why have you shown me this? And he said, I wanted you to take a picture of what my spirit looks like when the devil comes against the people of God. He said, though I am a God of love, I'm a fierce God. And no weapon that's formed against anybody that I have called to do a mighty work with me shall prosper. He said, because the enemy will contend with me. 855730 oh word. 855730 oh word. I don't, oh my God, I don't know why I feel the anointing even when I call this phone number. 855730 oh word. 855730 oh word. Somebody said, well, Why are you shouting? Because when Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus, he looked up. And he spoke to the Father. And his tone was gentle and soft because he was speaking to the one. And he said, you always hear me. That's, that's the revelation. He said, you always hear me. So I don't have to shout to you. Because you always hear me. But when he got ready to call Lazarus. He had to shout. <laughs> he had to shout because he was shouting to somebody that was dead. And when I start shouting that number, he said, you're shouting the number tonight because you're shouting for somebody that's dead. You're shouting for somebody that's spiritually dry. You're shouting for somebody who has dried up in their anointing. You're shouting for somebody who's trying to quit their ministry. You're shouting for somebody that's ready to give up on God. He said, you're shouting the number because if they be obedient when they put the phone down before the prayer show and the oil can even get to your house, a breakthrough will take place instantly in your mind. Seven, eight, five, five, seven, three, oh, word. Sister Lillian, go talk about Jesus was on his way because a father said to him my 12 year old daughter is dead while he was on his way to that assignment a woman who wasn't even on his radar good God she was 12 years, 12 years sick with a bleeding disorder. And the scripture said that when she reached her hands 
Yes, God. To touch him. They teach us that the priestly robes then were very colorful at the bottom. Mm. Because the robe at the bottom represented the healing, all of the types of healing that was needed for those who were in need. And just imagine this, the girl was 12 and the woman had the issue for 12 years. My God. So that means when the girl was born, the woman got news of her sickness. Jesus. That means when the girl learned how to walk and play, the woman was being ostracized in the same community. My God. That means when the girl turned 12 years old and she lost her life, this woman who had been dying all along reached down and grabbed a piece of his garment. And the death that she was feeling all alone gave her life. Yes, Lord. What I'm trying to say to you is while there are some who are dying and you're not the assignment for today, God said, right now, if you'll reach out for me. Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. The healing that you need in your body, in your mind, and in your home, I will heal you right now. Can I just share yes, one more thing? Go ahead, go ahead. Because while the presence of the Lord was going forth, the Lord reminded me of something while she was talking about the prayer shawls. The Lord reminded me that the prophet Elijah was caught up in a whirlwind Jesus. and never died. But on his way up, he dropped his mantle to the prophet Elisha. Elisha not only had Elijah's mantle, but he got a double portion. But Elisha died and never passed his mantle on to anybody. My God. It was 100 years. Come on, come. After Elisha had died. And the Bible says that there were a band of Moabites. Moabites are the children of Ham. These are the cursed folk. Y'all not hearing? Jesus. They come around every harvest season to take whatever you possess. The Bible says that two men was carrying a dead man with them. And when they saw the Moabites coming, they threw away the dead man. My God, my God. To try and save their own life. But when the dead man touched the bones of the dead prophet, he got up and started running. What am I trying to tell you? I wish I could go to church. I'm trying to tell you that there are some of you that were thrown away. There are some of you that were pronounced dead. And tonight the Lord said, not only will I give you Elijah's mantle, not only will I give Elijah's mantle or Elijah's double portion, but I'm gonna give you favor. And everything in your life that was pronounced dead is about to get up and start running. 855-730 word. You better get you a mantle because everything that you thought was dead and had no life. God said healing is coming. Hey. God said victory is y'all standing there looking at me funny. Hey. The Lord said deliverance is coming to your house. Elijah's mantle was an eternal mantle. It never died. But you want to know what your double portion is? Your double portion is this. That you not only get the mantle of the one that never died, but I'm going to give you the mantle of the one who has the keys to death. Oh, if you will, let you do me 
in the studio audience, if you'll just take a minute and forget cameras are going around, there's a generation out here, there's an Elisha generation that are waiting to get up. Can you go into a praise and you represent 10 families, pull that 10 families through with your praise right now. talking about this is the generation this is the generation that I'm talking about right now all over the world if you're watching what I feel happening now God is looking for his nobodies he's looking for the people that other people don't know about Tonight is a prime example of somebody sitting there saying, who is that woman? Last night was a prime example of somebody saying, who was that man? God just spoke to me and said, I got a lot of them. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. You better start praising God because if you've been believing God for him to make himself manifest in you, if you have been trusting God for God's glory to be made manifest in you, you better praise God because I hear the Lord say, I'm snatching the cover up. I'm about to reveal in the earth realm those that I have called, those that I have chosen. Somebody go to praise and call. Zero word eight five five seven three zero word. I will not share my glory with another. What a powerful, powerful revelation on tonight. The Bible says that man is the glory of God, and he said, I will not share you with nobody. Then the Lord says. He's sending out angels searching for his nobodies. His the, nobodies. The people, Bishop Bloomer, my, one of my favorite authors is Abraham Heschel, Rabbi Abraham Heschel. And he said that the glory of God can be revealed when the people that are seeking to be used find their nothingness. 
when they find their nothingness, when they, when they can look at themselves and say, I ain't nothing except for the glory of God be revealed in me. All that I do is as a filthy rags, because if it wasn't for the glory of God being revealed in me, he said, when they find their nothingness, then the people will see their God. When you find your nothingness, then the people will see our God. And he said, the changing of the guards is coming. And I feel the wooing of the spirit about this tonight. Because this is, I don't know why I feel this so strong, but this is about people who have been held in restraint. Feeling like you can't break through to that place and ministry you want to be in. Pick up the phone, 855-730-WORD. The anointing that's in this building during this revival is causing a transformation in your spirit when this prayer shawl arrive in your home and Bishop many of people are saying oh the presence that's here I felt led to do something today www.juanitabinum.com I did a song called I don't want to leave this place I don't want to leave the place of intimate worship and the Lord said offer it as a free download go to my website www.juanitabinum.com a free download is waiting for you. I don't want to leave this place. He said, begin to prepare the people for worship. Begin to prepare them for my presence. Begin to state to them the urgency that my presence is not a delicacy, but my presence is an urgency. Because this time, I will not share my glory with another. www.juanitabonham.com, a free load. A, a free download is waiting for you because I don't know about you the way I feel in this house today Bishop D people were asking well who are these people they're not brother and sister they're husband and wife and what an anointing on both of them last night he wiped us out in the Holy Ghost and I guess tonight they just switched the anointing just, just switched from one to the other but we give God glory for your lives we give God glory for you Man to God, we speak the speed of God on your ministry. The anointing that sits up on you is absolutely incredible. And we speak a fresh wind. We speak new revelation. We speak that God would do for you what has never been done before. We speak it on you, Pastor Lillian. That doors will open that no man can shut. That both of you all will go forth as a two-edged sword in the spirit and that God will get the glory out of this and God we pray for Bishop J.D. Ellis we pray for the legacy we pray God for the call for him to call bishops into the presence of God and now God strengthen him now God bind the hand of the enemy up strengthen his body up give him youth back God in the mighty name of Jesus God help him now show him even a greater vision show him a greater revelation concerning where you are taking leadership as it relates to how to get the people in the face of the glory of the Lord and we thank you for it now and somebody give God a shout I will not share 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD, Paula 107, Eva 107, Michelle 107, Joseph 107. You need to clap your hands. This is happening.